Who do you think was the wealthiest man over the last 600 years ever in the world? We've got Rothschild. I heard of Rockefeller. Carnegie. So there's a man named Jacob Fugar who in today's dollars earned $400 billion net worth by his 36th birthday. And he did it by building copper mines in the 1400s. So today we're gonna to talk about copper. And um, let's start with the macro outlook. Maybe, um, Ross, can I pass it to you to kick this one off? Sure, thanks Jay, and good morning everybody. Um, well, quite frankly, I'm not even sure why I'm here, because, uh, because uh, copper was my, my story, you know, a few years ago with all the Lumina companies, um, but today it's gold, and so, you know, I happen to love gold, like, of all the metals, that's my number one commodity, and after that, probably would be silver, and after that, for sure, copper. So it's, it's still in the top three, and it's, and it's not, just, um, not just the commodity, it's, it's, it's where the commodity is in the price cycle. So today, what, copper is trading for 375, give or, give or take? So is it going to double? Um, I'm not sure it's gonna double. I mean, there's a fair bit of copper in the world. Um, it's a very valuable metal for all sorts of things. Mostly today, it's in the electricity world, right? It's, it's a, a critical metal for the whole energy transition we're in from energy generation, energy transmission, and ultimate end use in, in a just a variety, you know, thousands of things. So it's a super important metal. It's definitely a, it's, it's the critical metal for the energy transition more than anything else. Um, but there's a lot of copper in the world. So just to maybe sum up my own views, copper is, is, a, is a great metal. It's my third favorite metal today. It's at a reasonable price. Um, and I think copper exploration and development companies should do pretty well. It's, it's a good metal. Uh, I happen to like gold more, but there you go. Quick break here. This episode is brought to you by West Red Lake Gold Mines. Now, if you know nothing about West Red Lake Gold Mines, let me tell you one thing. This company was founded on the back of a transaction where they purchased the Madsen Mine in Northwestern Ontario in an area called the Red Lake Gold District, which to date has produced around 30 million ounces of gold from some of the richest gold deposits in the world. Now, what they paid for this mine versus what they got has led legendary mining entrepreneur Frank Justra to call this transaction the deal of the decade. And Bob Moriarty, founder of 321 Gold, was recently on my show calling West Red Lake Gold Mines one of the two most undervalued gold companies in Canada. If you're curious why these individuals are so excited about West Red Lake Gold Mines, hit the link below to learn more. Now back to the episode. All right, th thank you, Ross. And Ivan, I'll pass it to you. Com company builder, what's your take on the copper market today? Sure, um, 20 years ago, when I got in the business, copper was uh, around well below a dollar per pound. And grades are a lot higher. And right now, the grades have come down considerably from where they were. But it's even harder now to find a high quality, high grade copper mine in the world than it ever has been before, because a lot of the easy ones have been found. And to Ross's point, there's no shortage of copper in the world, but there's a shortage of quality copper in the world, and that's the big variance. The second thing is the ESG initiatives that we're all aware of and we all adhere to have slowed down the pace that it takes to dig a big hole in the ground and build a major copper mine. And the third point, if you look at some of the top 10 copper mines in the world, I think three of them will expire in the next 15, 20 years. So it has a perpetual performing outlook as a price of a commodity. I'm driven by discovery. Copper happens to be the metal. I love gold, I'm a gold bug. I'm a copper bull. It's a long-term performing asset, but quality is what you have to add to the phrase. And I think copper is essential. As we all see the population grow, the modernization, the electrification, it's gonna be a key metal going forward as recently described as a critical metal in the US that's been qualified recently. So I'm a huge bull on copper, but I'm a bigger bull on discoveries. And I think we have a chance at both. And Rick, same question. I had the good fortune some years ago to get a call from Ross Beatty when he was building Lumina. I think I was shareholder number two. And I had uh, I'd been through a couple of adventures with Ross and they had happy endings. And so I was gonna do the deal anyway, but I had the good fortune to the day after I talked to Ross, talk to a guy named Jim Bob Moffat, uh, another great entrepreneur who built the Freeport Mac Moran companies. And in the course of the conversation, I said, uh, you know, Jim Bob, just talk to me about copper. He said, well, I'm agnostic as to commodities, 
but if you look around the world at great big mines, mines that make a million dollars a day or two million dollars a day, most of them are copper mines. And for that reason, I like copper because I like to make a lot of money as opposed to a little money. He said, the best business in extractive industries is in oil and gas because it's a bigger business and it's a better business and there's smarter people. The second best is copper. And I thought about that. Uh, and I thought about the success that Ross had buying out of the money, well, first buying out of the money silver deposits in Pan American. And then when that worked, buying out of the money copper deposits. Uh, and for that reason, I'm like Jim Bob. I'm, well, I'm not quite commodity agnostic. I like gold. I got to admit that. But I, I like money. Uh, and I note in my life, great big deposits, if they yield you a surprise, yield you a good surprise. And little deposits, if they yield you a surprise, yield a bad surprise, and there's not enough reserve life to overcome the surprise. Uh, at 70, I know that surprises are inevitable, and I'd prefer good surprises to bad surprises. So I like the copper business for that reason. If you look around the world at the great big mines that make boatloads of money, probably what? other than iron ore, probably 60% of them copper mines. So that's why I like it.